Okay, so for um, this video, we are going to discuss the partial question okay, for paper 3, which is October, November 2020, paper 31. All right. Okay, so let's have a look for question number 1. Okay, so for question number 1, it is an inequality that involves the modulus function. Okay, so for this question, you can see that one side got modulus, the other side got has no modulus, modulus right? Okay, so... Um, for me, right, I'm going to use the function for the modulus. I will split it become two. Okay, so the definition of the modulus function will be one is all of them must have the positive value, right? Okay, so one is x minus three, the other one is negative x minus three. And for x minus three, it will valid when x greater or equals to three. And when x smaller than 3, if you substitute the value inside this function, you will get a positive value as well. So this is actually the definition for the modulus function. Okay, then I will substitute it into the inequality. All right, so for the first part, so first part of the function is this one. For the modulus, uh, for the domain of x greater or equals to 3, we are going to use this x minus 3 function. Okay, so I'm going to substitute into the in inequality in the question. Okay, so I'm having 2 and then x minus 3. Okay, then I try to simplify everything here. Okay, and therefore you get 7x smaller equals to 8. And therefore your x is smaller than 8 over 7. Okay, then the other part will be for x smaller than 3, Again, you are going to use this equation now, this expression, in and substitute into the inequality. Therefore, I'm having 2 minus 5x greater than 2, and then negative x minus 3. Okay, so again, we do the same thing. You try to simplify everything here. So I'm having negative 2x plus 6. Alright, so if I continue to simplify it, then I'm having negative 4 and therefore x is smaller than negative 4 over 3. Okay, so for these two parts of answer, right, before you decide the final answer, you have to double check and see whether the answer that you get uh, fulfill the domain or not. So like for this one, you get 8 over 7, so you have to double check and see whether is it fulfilled x greater or equals to 3. So you realize that 8 over 7 is actually not under x greater or equals to 3, therefore you have to ignore this answer. Alright, then after that we double check the negative 4 over 3. So for negative 4 over 3, if you double check, it actually fulfills. It falls under the domain where x smaller uh, smaller than 3. So which means this is the answer. So the answer for the first question will be x smaller than negative 4 over 3. Okay, so question number 2. Alright, so for question number two, they want you to sketch on uh, argon diagram for the reason, uh, region where the points represent the complex numbers that are satisfying the inequality. So there are two in inequalities here. The first one is this one, the second one is this, and you can see that both of them have modulus on the left-hand side, then a number on the right-hand side. So this kind of pattern belongs to a circle. Alright, so you need to identify what is the ra radius of the circle and also as the center of the circle. Alright, so for the first one, we are having modulus z greater or equals to 2 and usually I will rephrase it become z minus 0 plus 0i. It is greater or equals to 2. So from here, you don't know that the 0, 0 will be the center of this circle and also the 2 will be the radius. Alright, okay. Then for the second inequality, you are having modulus z minus 1 plus i smaller equals to 1. Okay, then uh, again, I will rephrase it become z minus, so I'm having 1 minus i here. So that you substitute the negative uh, back into the um, bracket, you still get back the same original inequality, right? Okay, so smaller equals to 1. So again, from here, you can see that this is actually the center. 1 and negative 1 will be the center of the second circle here and the radius will be equals to 1. Okay, so now you can start sketching it. Alright, so for on an argon diagram, okay, your graph should look something like this, more or less. This is a real axis and this is the imaginary axis. Okay, so I'm having, um, maybe this is 1, this is 2. Okay, so you try to 
make the ratio as accurate as possible. So I'm having one here, then two, then one and two. Okay, so for the first circle, right, for the first circle here in red color, so the center is zero, zero, and also the radius will be two. So that means uh, this is the origin, this is the center. Okay, the origin will be the center of the first circle, and then the it will pass through all the axes at two. So that means your first circle might look something like this. Okay. Alright, so my ratio is not good enough. Alright, so it looks like a, an oval. But no matter how, generally uh, try to make it like a circle as possible as you can. Right. Okay, then now for the second center here, for the second circle here equation, uh, we are having the center 1 and negative 1 with the radius 1. Right, so 1 and negative 1, the center might be here. Okay, so the radius is one unit, so that means uh, for this circle, it will pass through all this point. Okay, so the second circle will look something like this. Okay, so if you can, try to draw it like a circle, as possible as you can. Alright, okay, so the red color will be the first one, the first circle, and the purple color will be the second circle. Okay, so if you look at the first circle here, for the inequality, they are asking for the region more than 2. So that means outside the circle is the region that you want. So you can imagine that you actually, or, uh, originally you should highlight or maybe you should shade the area outside the red circle. Okay, and for the second circle here, they want you to shade the region where it is smaller than 1. Smaller than the radius means that you should, you should shade the area inside the purple circle. Okay, so you try to see where is the intersection part okay, of these two circles, the, the two shaded area. So the first shaded area is outside the red circle. The second shaded area is inside the purple circle. Therefore, the overlap part will be this part. Okay, all right. So this is what we have uh, for the answer for uh, question number two. Alright, so again, this is for red color, okay, first inequality, and the purple color will be for the second inequality. Alright, so if you try to shade the area, according to the inequality here, the overlap part will be this green color part. So this is the answer for question number three. Okay, so now continue with question number three. Alright, so they, they give you um, parametric equations, uh, x, in term, x and y in terms of theta, and they want you to show that dy dx equals to cotangent theta. Okay, so to get the dy dx, now the first step is you need to do the differentiation separately for x and also y first. Okay, so the differentiation for dx over d theta is equals to differentiate the 3, you get a 0. And then when you differentiate negative cos 2 theta, you will get negative sine 2 theta. I'm um, sorry, wait, uh, if you differentiate negative cos 2 theta, right, you should have negative differentiate cos you get negative sine so you copy the two theta here and after that you differentiate the two theta again then you get a two all right so eventually what you get here is two sine two theta okay then the next one is you need to do the differentiation for y with respect to theta so dy theta what do you have is differentiate two theta you get two and then differentiate sine two theta you get cos two theta and you differentiate the angle again, you get 2. And if you try to simplify it, you have 2 plus 2 cos 2 theta. Okay, so you do the differentiation separately. And after that, you want to combine them to get the dy dx. So to combine them, you need to apply the chain rule, which is dy over d theta multiply with d theta over dx. So that you can get dy dx. Right, so the dy d theta will be 2 plus 2 cos 2 theta then divided by okay, divided by dx d theta which is 2 sine 2 theta okay so once you get to this step already then you have to ask yourself how are you going to get the answer which is cotangent theta so you can observe uh, the angle inside the cotangent is a single angle like theta only but in your steps here you are having 2 theta a double angle all right so to get the answer in terms of the single angle theta, generally you need to apply the double angle formula. 
Okay, so for the denominator, if you try to expand it, you will have 2. Sine 2 theta, you will get 2 sine theta cos theta. Okay, so this is the double angle formula for sine 2 theta. And after that, for the cos 2 theta on top, you can expand it as well. Okay, try to apply the um, double angle formula. Right, so for this case, cos 2 theta, um, you can apply any formula la, which is related to cos 2 theta. Okay, so for me, I'm going to apply the 2 cos square theta minus 1. Okay, so the reason is because of actually uh, I can foresee that I want to cancel off the 2. Okay, so if the 2 here, I have negative 1 at the back, so 2 minus 2, you will cancel off the 2. Okay, right. Then after that, if I continue further, then you can see that eventually I left 4 cos square theta on top and divided by 4 sine theta cos theta. So I think from here you can see very clearly 4 and 4 can be cancelled with each other and then the power 2 and the cos theta can be cancelled with each other. Then you will have cos theta divided by sine theta. And you simplify it, definitely you get cotangent theta. So this is how we prove okay, that dy dx is equal to cotangent theta. Okay, so question number four, um, they show you the log, okay, the equation that involves log, uh, and they want you to solve the equation and give your answer to three uh, decimal places. Alright, so to solve the log equation, generally, um, for me, right, I will try to cancel off the log if possible. Okay, so we will start now. Okay, so originally I'm having log 10 and then 2x plus 1 equals to 2 log base 10 x plus 1 and to make the log disappear right i have to make sure that every single term here i will have the same base of the log so for the one here i'm going to change it become log 10 10 okay and now i'll try to bring back all the number in front so that it become a power Alright, so for this case, I'm having x plus 1 squared. Alright, then minus log base 10. So, minus log 10, 10. Okay, then I combine the two terms on the right-hand side of the equation become one terms only. Alright, so for here, I'm having x plus 1 squared because of the minus here. Therefore, you have to divide it by 10. So, we are using the um concept of log a minus log b you can rewrite it or rephrase it become log a divided by b right so we are going to use this uh, concept here the rule here the property here okay so since left hand side right hand side both sides you have only one log with the same base therefore you can straight away cancel them all right so the equation without the log you will have something like this Okay, so to solve it, you have to expand everything and you can maybe try to see what kind of equation we have eventually. So we are having x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, and you're having 20x plus 20. Okay, so I try to rephrase everything again. Um, for this one, what do I have here? I'm having minus the i'm sorry i make a mistake here the careless mistake this one right so this one should be a 10 okay so minus 1 minus 10 you get a negative 9 which is equals to 0. so you can try to use the quadratic equation the quadratic formula okay to solve for the x because this is a quadratic equation all right so eventually what is the answer for the x that you get will be 18.487 and the other one will be x equals to negative 0 0.487 okay so if you want you can actually double check these two values right by substituting them into the original equation 
Okay, you have to ensure that the value inside the log, uh, it will be always positive. Alright, so if I substitute these two values into my equation, into my log here, okay, I realize that all of them are positive, therefore I will set both answer here. Alright, so question 5a. Okay, they want you to sketch a suitable pair of graph, uh, show that this equation has exactly two roots in the interval 0 to pi. Okay, so um, first of all, you need to know what kind of graph you need to sketch for this part, right? So generally, um, you can separate this equation into two graphs. The first one will be y equals to cosecant x. Another one will be y equals to 1 plus e negative x over 2. Okay, so you need to sketch these two graphs and they only restricted this graph into this domain which is from 0 until pi. Okay, so we are going to sketch this. Alright, and then um, after you sketch both graph here, you need to show that there are two intersection points to prove there are two roots, exactly two roots in this interval that we draw the graph. Okay. So um, first of all, we talk about the cosecant x. How are we going to draw the cosecant x? So cosecant x, the original graph is sine x. All right, so for sine x, generally from 0 to pi, right, the sine x graph will look something like this. And this is the one. Okay, when you want to draw 1 over sine x, which is cosecant x, generally there are a few things that you need to know. First of all, at these two points, right, when the original point is 0, so when you're having 1 over 0, it will become infinity. So that means these two lines will become the asymptote at 0 and pi. Okay, and the second thing is at the max maximum point, all right, when you take 1 over, it will become a minimum point, and the value will be 1 divided by 1, which is still the 1. So that means the minimum point will be still here, and therefore, if you try to connect, okay, the concept that we have just now, uh, the graph cannot touch the asymptote, right? So the cosecant x graph will look something like this in green color. Okay, all right. So now we will just sketch it inside our real graph. All right, so this is pi and this is x and y. Therefore, for this part itself, Okay, so maybe I don't want to make the 1 too high, so I'll make this value as a 1, and my cosecant x will look something like this. Alright, so this is my y equals to cosecant x. Okay, so done for the cosecant x, and now we are going to focus on how to sketch okay, the e power x over 2. Alright, so first of all, you need to know the original graph for e power negative x. Okay, so you should know that actually e power negative x, uh, it will pass through the y-intercept. Uh, the y-intercept is always the value 1. Okay, and then you can see that the asymptote is actually the x axis. This is for e negative x. So if you're having the e power half a uh, power negative half x all right so generally the the shape is still the same just that the gradient will be a bit different all right okay so i'm not going to change the shape anymore okay it is still the same shape for this one okay so i assume that e negative half x so it won't change the y intercept at all all right and after that you want to plus one so plus one means that you are going to do a transformation one unit up Okay, so when you want to do a transformation one unit up, that means that the asymptote value, you need to move it up as well. So originally, the asymptote is at x axis, and therefore now the asymptote becomes y equals to 1. So that means you move up the asymptote for one unit. <coughs> one unit. And the coordinate, the, the y intercept also, originally it is at 1, and you need to move up one unit, it becomes 2. So your e power, the, the whole graph one will look something like this. Okay, so the y-intercept become a 2 and the horizontal asymptote will become x, uh, sorry, will become y equals to 1. Alright, so now I want to put this graph into the graph to combine it with the cosecant x graph. Okay, so now this is my horizontal asymptote. Okay, and after that, uh, I'm having a y-intercept which is a 2. 
Yeah. All right. So now, if I try to sketch a graph, it should look something like this. So um, the graph should actually pass. Okay, maybe I draw it better. Okay, so the graph should pass through the two. Okay, and then getting closer and closer to the horizontal asymptote, which is um, y equals to 1. So for this one, the purple color one will be y equals to 1 plus e negative x over 2. Okay, and this y-intercept is actually the 2. Okay, so how to prove that there are exactly two roots in the interval? So you can see that you got two intersection points. Okay, first one and the second one. Two intersection point from zero to pi. All right. So once you can show that there are two intersection point between uh, the domain show, uh, the domain given. All right. So you can make a conclusion. So you can say that you can see two intersection point can be seen. Okay. Between. the domain given therefore there are two roots okay in the interval zero to pi for the equation cosecant x equals to one plus E power negative half x. Okay, so this is how we actually show the graph and also the conclusion, the, the, the reason with the conclusion. Okay, so next we go to question number 5, 5b. Alright, so for 5b, they give you an iterative formula. Okay, this is the given iterative formula and they also give you the initial value which is x1 equals to 2. Then by using this initial value and also the iterative formula given, they actually want you to find out the root. Okay, correct to two decimal places. And also for each iteration, they want you to show it, show your answer in four decimal places. Okay, so uh, since it is given that the first value is two, okay, so to get the second value means that you need to substitute the value two into the iterative formula. Okay, so I'm having 1 over e negative 1 plus 1. So what's the value that we get from here after we substitute the 2 into the iterative formula? Okay, so you can show it by using the calculator. So for this iteration formula, because of it involves the trigo. Alright, so any equation that involves the trigo in differentiation, integration, or all this kind of question, you need to ensure that your calculator has been changed into radian mode. All right, so radian mode, which is 4. Okay, so it's in radian mode already. Then you can start pressing the formula. All right, so my iterative formula is pi minus sine inverse. So to get a pi minus sine inverse. So sine inverse is this one. Okay, then with a bracket and a... Um, okay, so with a fraction inside. Okay, so 1. And then for the original here, I'm having e power negative x over 2. Okay, so x over 2 means that it is x divided by 2. Okay, or maybe I need to um, put a bracket. Okay, so that I'm having x divided by 2. Okay, then plus 1. And after that, close bracket. Okay, so once I type in the iterative formula into the calculator, all right, okay, then I can start pressing the value. So first one, I press calculate. Okay, I press the calculate and they're asking what's the first value. You press 2 and you press equal sign. Okay, so the first value that you can get is 2.32172053 as shown now. All right. Okay, so you can write 2.23, uh, sorry, 3217. They are asking until four decimal places. 
Okay, so for each iteration formula, so this is what I can write. Okay. Then you can continue the next one. So again, you press calculate again in your calculator and then key in this value now, 2.3217. Okay, so after you press the calculator, right, you get um, the value which is 2.2759. So maybe I will make it as x3 equals to 2. Point, um, 2760. Since they want four decimal places, right, for each of the iteration. So I'm having 2760. Okay, and then after that, I want to continue to get the next value, right? So to get the next value again, okay, so in the calculator itself, all right, so you just press the calculate sign. And I will key in 2.2760 and press equal sign. Okay, so now the question the calculator gives you another answer which is 2.2824. So in this part you can write 2.2824. Okay, so after you get the 2824, right, if you double check with the answer for x3 and x4, you will realize that in two decimal places, both of them are actually 2.28. But usually if I want it to be more accurate, right, I will maybe try to attempt a few more um, iterations. Now. So maybe I go for the x5. Okay, so to get the x5, again, you press calculate on the calculator and you key in the x4 value. So from here, you know that it should be 2.2824 and you press the equal sign again. And the calculator gives you 2.2815. So you can put in 2.2815. Okay, then now you double check again with all the iteration here in two decimal places because your final answer in root now must be two decimal places, right? Okay, so x3, two decimal places is 2.28. X4, two decimal places, also 2.28, and also the same things happen uh, for 2.28 in X5. All right, so from here, I think it is uh, time for you to do the conclusion that the root is equals to 2.28. Okay, so let's have a look for question number six. Uh, question number six, they want you to express this expression into the form R cos theta minus alpha, and they want you to state the exact value for R and also give alpha correct to two decimal places. All right, so um, for this one, it is quite straightforward. So let's say the square root of six will be the A and also the three will be the B. To get the R, it is actually A square plus B square square root. So you're having square root of square root six square plus three square. Okay, so um, from here, the exact value for R will be square root 15. Okay, and then for alpha, so to get alpha, the formula will be tangent inverse b over a. So for b, it is actually a 3 over a, which is square root 6. Alright, so for pressing calculator, then you will get the answer, which is 50.77 degree. So for this case, um, they actually want you to rephrase your answer for alpha in two decimal places. So that's why you can see that this is in two decimal places. And um, how I know that it is in degree. Okay, so you can see the definition here. The alpha is between 0 to 90 degrees. So um, from here, I know that it is in degree form, not in radian form. All right. Okay, so once I get the value for R and also the alpha, so you can rewrite the equation if you want, where um, the square root 6 cos theta plus 3 sine theta, it is actually equal to square root 15. Okay, then cos theta minus alpha. Okay, so this is what we have for part number A. Alright, so let's continue to part number B. So for part number B, they actually want you to solve this equation. Okay, so equals to 2.5 for x between 0 to 360. Okay, so now if you look at this equation here, the left hand side, the pattern is actually similar to what we have in part A. Alright, so what you can do now is um, if you try to compare them, they are actually almost the same. 
just that the data they have changed it become x over 3 in this second part, part B. Can you see that or not? So the data originally they have changed it become x over 3. Right, so uh, you can rewrite it into the equation with the expression that we get just now, which is square root 50. And cos, since the data has been changed, become x over 3, so you just copy it, minus 50.773. Okay, and it is equals to 2.5. Right, so you have to try to link it with the expression that we get just now. Right, so you can see the pattern is the same, unless, uh, except you change the data, become x over 3 only. Okay, so from here, you want to continue to get the value for x. Okay, so for this one, I will bring it over. I'm having 2.5 divided by square root 15. And I will bring the cost over, become cost inverse, right? Okay, so before... I start to find out the value, I will want to find the basic angle. So that means the, the angle in the first quadrant. Right, so the basic angle here, when you bring the cos over, it will become cos inverse. Okay, so 2.5 over square root 15. Okay, and then from here, I get my basic angle is 49.80 degree. Okay, and now I need to go through with all the quadrant to get the possible values okay for my angle here all right for my angle here this angle okay all right so now since they want you to have your answer from 0 to 360 degree all right so if you want to make it become 1 over 3 x so you're having 0 degree until 120 degree and after that, if you try to minus 50.77 degree, and then here you'll get negative 50.77, uh, 77. And also, if you try to get 120, uh, 120 okay, minus 50.77, it will be in the first quadrant. All right. So uh, why is this important? Because of you actually want to know uh, from which quadrant you want to get the value from. Okay, so from here, negative 55, uh, 50.77 degree, uh, it belongs to the fourth quadrant measured in the opposite direction. Okay, and then for this one, it will be appear, the angle, the answer will appear in the first quadrant. Alright, so before you continue with the answer, you have to double check. You want to have cos with a positive value. So cos with a positive value means that both, from both quadrants, you actually want to get the answer. Okay, all right. So to get the answer from this quadrant, we want to measure it in the negative angle. So the answer will be negative theta, or maybe I will say it as negative basic angle. All right. So the negative basic angle will be my answer here, which is negative 49.8. All right. So I'm not going to go with the negative second angle. I'm not going to this part. Why? There are a few reasons here. The first one is because the cost is negative value here. So I don't want the answer from this quadrant. And another reason is from what we've seen here, okay, so negative 50.77 will be the smallest value that you want to get. All right, so it only appear in this quadrant, not in this one. Okay, All right, so that's why the first quadrant here, it will be the negative basic angle, which is negative 49.8. And after that, this quadrant belongs to this range, right? Okay, so I also want the answer from this quadrant, which is first quadrant, and also it is the value for your basic angle. All right, so 1 over 3 equals to, you take these two value plus 50.77. So you should get 2.91. And also, I'm um, sorry, you get two value, all right? So I don't know what's the value. I didn't count it out. So you can count it out first. And after that, you multiply your answer with three. So after you multiply your answer with three, right? You have two answer here, which is 2.91 and also 301.71 degree. And you can change it become one decimal place for the angle 
for the answer in angle. Okay, answer in degree, right? So you have 2.9 degree and also 301.7 degree. So this is your final answer here. Alright, so of course this is not the only method for you to get the answer. So some, some students might want to use trial and error method okay, to figure out which quadrant answer you want to accept also can. Alright, so it depends on how you think about it. Lah. So for this method, it is just a suggestion. Alright, for you to observe, okay, from which quadrant you want to get the value from. Alright, so this will be the final answer for question number 6, part B. Okay, so let's have a look for question number 7. So they want you to verify that this is actually a root of this equation. Alright, so that means your root means your x. Alright, so x is a complex number here. Okay, and they want you to prove that it is a root. So um, to prove that it is a root, then generally you need to substitute the root given into the equation to prove that it is equal to zero. All right, so first of all, maybe um, before I substitute it straight away uh, into the equation, what I want to do is like, I will want to find out the expansion for x power 3 and also the expansion for x power 2. When I substitute the x is equal to negative 1 plus square root 5, 1. Okay, so for x power 3, Okay, so what I want to do is like, I want to substitute this power 3, right? So power 3 means that you are having 3 brackets here. Okay, so maybe I want to expand the first 2 brackets first. Okay, so when I want to expand the first 2 brackets, I'm having um, 1 minus square root 5, 1 minus square root 5, 1. Okay, and after that, I'm having um, minus 5. Okay, with negative 1 plus square root 5, 1. Okay, and after that, what do you have here is you try to rephrase this one before you continue to expand it. So to rephrase this one, I will get negative 4 minus 2 square root 5, i. And then I want to multiply it with square root, uh, negative 1 plus square root 5 i. Alright, so um, just to take note that this one, this is actually your x square. After you substitute the, maybe I can should say this is actually your um, negative 1 plus square root 5 i square or x square. Alright, so just to let you take note about it. So that later you can straight away substitute this one. Okay, for x squared. Okay, then now you further expand it. Alright, so negative 1 multiply with uh, negative 4 multiply with 1, you negative 1 you get a 4, then minus 4 square root 5i, then plus 2 square root 5i, and after that you should have 2 multiply with 5 and multiply with negative 1, and therefore you should get a plus 10. Okay, then if you try to simplify it further, then you should have negative, oh sorry, 14 minus 2 square root 5i. So this actually is your x power 3. Okay, then now you need to substitute all your information into the left hand side of the equation. Alright, so left hand side of the equation, you're having 2x power 3, right? Okay, so 2x power 3 means that you need to substitute 2x power 3. This is your x power 3 here. Okay, then plus x squared. Right, so just now I mentioned to you that like x squared is what x squared is. This one. Okay, so you have negative 4 minus 2 square root 5i plus 6x. So substitute the x into the equation or the expression and then minus 18. Alright, so what you need to do now is you have to try to prove that um, when you try to simplify everything, you will get a zero. Okay, so let us see and let us see whether we are able to get the answer zero or not. Okay, so now you can have a look at negative 4 square root 5i, negative 2 square root 5i, and plus square root 5, 6 square root 5i will be cancelled off with each other and then 28 minus 4 minus 6 minus 18 so 
eventually you will get a zero, which is the right-hand side equation. So this is how we prove that the root, okay, so is uh, negative 1 plus square root 5i is actually a root of the equation for this one. Okay, all right, so this is how we prove it. Okay, then after that, we continue to part number B. Okay, so part number B, they want you to find the other roots of this equation. All right, so now, if you look at the equation here, 2x power 3 plus x squared plus 6x minus 18 equals to 0. Okay, all right, so from here, you can see that all the coefficient of the x are real number so when you're having all it a polynomial with all the coefficient of x are real number right okay then generally uh, the roots for complex uh, for complex number or we call it as complex root uh, will appear in conjugate pair so that means uh, you are having the first root which is equals to negative 1 plus square root 5i. So this is given by the question, right, just now in part A. So this is the first root, first complex root, and the second complex root, you no need to prove anything because you know the theorem, right? So it should be negative 1 minus square root 5i, the roots. So the, conjugate, uh, the complex roots appear in conjugate pairs when you're having all the coefficient of polynomial, okay? Uh, real numbers. Okay, so this is the first root, this is the second root. Okay, so because you are having the x power 3 equation, right, so that means you should have the third root here. So how can I get the answer for the third root? Okay, so this is first root, root number 1, and this is root number 2. Okay, so I need to form a quadratic factor, okay, from these two roots here. So to form the quadratic factor, you need the sum of roots. So what is the meaning of sum of roots? Eh? You add the roots together. So you're having negative 1 plus 5i, negative 1 minus 5i, square root 5i. Okay, then you try to expand it, the sum of roots. So the sum of roots will be negative 2. Hey, sorry, eh? I should write a plus here, right? So this is root number 1 plus root number 2. Okay, so negative 1 minus 1 become, become negative 2 and plus square root 5i minus square root 5i become nothing. So your sum of root will be negative 2. And after that, you need to get the product of root. So the product of roots means that you multiply these two roots together. Multiply. Okay, so when you want to multiply them, you'll get 1 minus square root 5i. Oh, sorry, plus, then minus square root 5i plus 5. And eventually, you will get a 6. Okay, so what is the quadratic factor? So to get the quadratic factor from these two roots, it will be a quadratic expression, So which means it should be x squared. Alright, so minus the sum of root x plus the product of root. Therefore, you should have x squared plus 2x plus 6. So this expression, the quadratic expression itself will be the quadratic factor. Okay, quadratic factor for the original polynomial. Okay, then now I want to get the last root. So to get the last root, you need to do the long division or maybe some other relevant methods. So I'm having 2x power 3 plus x squared plus 6x minus 18 divided by x squared plus 2x plus 6. Okay, so I multiply 2x, I'm having 2x power 3. Then this one, I'm having 2x squared plus 12. Okay, so I make a mistake here. It should be 2, 4. So this one should be 4. Alright, so you minus. 
Okay, so you minus the terms by terms. Then from here you get negative 3x squared minus 6x minus 18. So you can observe and see that, okay, when you multiply negative 3 with the quadratic factor, and therefore you complete the long division. So this is quotient, right? And this quotient, if you let the polynomial equals to 0, so this quotient is actually the other root. So 2x minus 3 equals to 0, and therefore your x will be 3 over 2. Okay, so the roots for this equation will be negative 1 plus square root 5i, negative 1 minus square root 5i, and also the value x equals to 3 over 2. Okay, so these are the other roots for this equation. So these two will be the answer. Okay, so let us continue with example uh, question number eight. Huh? All right, so here they give you the general point of a curve satisfy the differential equation. So this is the differential equation given, and of course they give you some initial values. Huh? Write some values here, and please take note that you need to know x will be more than zero. All right, so they want to solve the differential equation, obtaining an expression for y in terms of x. Okay, so um, first of all, of course, what you need to do is like you need to separate the variable okay into y and x to two different sides huh? all right so you're having this as your differential equation all right so i will move all the y to the right hand uh, to the left and also i will move all the x to the right hand side okay and after that i will want to integrate integrate both sides huh? Yeah, alright, so you can see that all the y are on the left and all the x are on the right. Okay, so uh, for left hand side here, you can see that to integrate 1 over y, it is very simple, which is ln y. Okay, so for the right hand side, you need to think about it. Alright, so you have a fraction and then uh, you should try to simplify your the fraction here. Okay, so you separate it into two different terms. Alright, simplify into two different terms and you are having this one. Alright, then if you realize that when you have two terms, uh, these are the function that you can do the integration. Okay, so you're having ln y equals to ln x minus, then try to integrate 2x, you are having x squared divided by 2 multiplied with 2, right? So eventually you're having x squared, then plus a constant term. Okay, so now to get the C, generally you need to substitute the value given. So when they say when x equals to 1, y equals to 1, which means that you substitute x and y equals to 1 into the equation. Okay, so from here, it gives you that C is the value equals to 1. Alright, so you rewrite the, uh, the equation again for your answer. Okay, so now they actually want you to rephrase your expression, uh, your answer y in terms of x. So now I want to try to express them to rephrase everything. Okay, so to rephrase everything, you can see that there are some terms with ln, some terms without ln. So to make my steps easier, usually what I'm going to do is that I will try to gather all the terms with ln in one side, then the other terms without the ln on the other side. So something like this. And then maybe um, I want to combine ln y minus ln x and you will get ln y over x, the property of the logarithmic functions, 1 minus x squared. So you move the ln over where the ln is actually the base e, right? So it will become the e power 1 minus x squared. And therefore, if you continue from here, then your final equation will be y equals to x multiply with e power 1 minus x squared. So you can see that your answer is expressed y in terms of x. Okay, so for question number 9, um, they want you to express the function fx into the partial fractions. Okay, so um, of course you need to write out the correct pattern first uh, for the partial fractions. Okay, so this one is the proper fractions, right? Because the numerator is x power 2 and the denominator is x power 3. 
Okay, so this is a proper fraction, and therefore you need to write out the correct pattern. Okay, so I'm having 1 minus x, and then 2 plus 3x squared. Okay, when you try to split it, it will become a over 1 minus x plus, and this one, the 2 plus 3x power 2 is actually the repeated factor. So repeated factor, you need to expand it okay, into two partial fractions. The first one is without the square, and the third one will need the square. Okay, so you multiply the whole equation, okay, the whole equation left hand side and right hand side by using the denominator here. And eventually, your equation will look something like this. Alright, so this is what we have here. Okay, then now I want to get the constant A, B and C. Right, so to get a constant a, b, and c, you can substitute any value of x to make, make the equation become zero, or maybe to make some certain terms become zero. That will be easier for you to um, get the answer. So the first one, I will let x equals to 1. So when I let x equals to 1, right, okay, you are having 25 on the left hand side. Okay, so 8 plus 5 plus 12, you get 25. 1 minus x, 1 minus 1 becomes zero. 1 minus 1 becomes 0, so the B and C disappear, and therefore you left only the A. Okay, so to get the A is 5 squared plus uh, 5 squared A, which is 25 A. Lah. So from here, very easily, you will get the value for A. It is equal to 1. Okay, so next one. So the next one, I will try to make the bracket 2 plus 3x become 0. So to make the 2 plus 3x become 0, you can substitute the value of x, which is equal to negative um, 2 over 3 okay or maybe you can do it like this uh, 2, 2 plus 3 x equals to 0 then you can see that x is equals to negative 2 over 3 so that's why i substitute x equals to 2 over 3 okay so now when you substitute x equals to 2 over 3 by using the help of calculator substitute all the value here okay the x become negative 2 over 3 and everything on the right hand side you will realize that the a and b disappear so Left hand side is a 10, okay, then you get 5 over 3c. Alright, then from here, c is equals to 6. Okay, then you already substitute x equals to 1. You have substitute x equals to negative 2 over 3, and all the bracket here has been used. So for the last value, you want to get a b, right? So you can use any value that you never used before. So like maybe for this example, I'll let x equals to 0. So when you let x equals to 0 on the left, you will get an 8 equals to substitute the x with 0 and also the number, the value of a and also the c that you already get earlier. So like 8 equals to 2 squared, which is a 4. 4 multiplied with a is a 1. So you still get a 4. Okay, then plus substitute the x with 0. From here, you should get 2b. And also the C is a 6, right? Okay, so if you try to further simplify, you'll get 2B equals to negative 2, and then B equals to negative 1. Alright, so you can see that these are all the three constants, the value of the three constants here, the A, B, and C, and then you can rephrase it again into the partial fraction form. Okay, so usually I will try to rephrase, rewrite everything again. Okay, so I'm having 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, minus 1 over 2 plus 3x. And after that, plus 6 divided by 2 plus 3x, then the whole thing squared. So this will be the partial fraction for the fx. Okay, all right, then after that, you can proceed to um, the second part, okay, part number B. Okay, so for part number B, they want us to obtain the expansion of fx in ascending power of x. So ascending power of x and then include the term in x squared. 
Okay, so uh, for this question itself, generally you can separate it into three different parts. Uh. Okay, so maybe for me, I'll use a different color to denote the terms. Okay, so maybe for the first term here, when you rephrase it, uh, you will become 1 minus x power negative 1. Okay, and then for this term, you will have 2 plus 3x power negative 1. And after that, the third term will be 6 and then 2 plus 3x power negative 2. Okay, so you're having three different parts here, three different terms, okay, for the fraction. So uh, I'm going to separate, I'm going to expand, uh, expand it in three different parts, and then only I combine them together later. Okay, so I will write it out here. For one, for the first term, it will be 1 minus x power 1. Power negative 1, sorry. Okay, so the formula will be, first term will be 1. The second term will be nx, so the n and x. Okay, so uh, just for your information, this one is the n, and the negative x is the x. All right, nx. Okay, then after that, the next term will be n, n minus 1. So n minus 1 will be negative 2. Okay, so n, n minus 1 divided by 2 factorial, and then x power 2. Okay, so by the help of using calculator, okay, by the help of calculator, you try to expand this one and you will get 1 plus x plus x squared. Okay, so this is what I have for the first uh, term, first bracket here. Okay, then the same thing happened for the rest. Okay, so for the second term, I'm having um, 2 plus 3x power negative 1. Okay, so to use the bundle expansion formula, right, you have to ensure that the first term always start with 1. So if you want to ensure that this one starts with 1, what you need to do is like, you need to pull out the 2 first. Okay, so the first step is you need to pull out the 2, follow with the power, and after you pull out the 2, right, remaining the value inside it will be the 1, then 3 divided by 2x power negative 1. Okay, so the 2 power negative 1, you get 1 over 2. Lah. Okay, then for this bracket now, this bracket now, you can realize that, oh, you realize that it starts with 1 already, so you can apply the binomial theorem formula, okay, to expand it. So the first term is still the 1, the second term will be nx, lah. so the n is negative 1, x is 3 over 2x, third term will be n, n minus 1, divided by 2 factorial, and after that, 3 over 2x power 2. Okay, so if you try to simplify this part, right, then you are having half. Okay, then this is 1, and then you are having 3 over 2x. Okay, so you are having 3 over 2x, oh sorry, it should be negative 3 over 2x. Okay, negative 3 over 2x and then plus 9 over 4x squared. Okay, then if you want, you can multiply inside, so you're having half minus 3 over 4x, then plus 9 over 8 x squared. Okay, so this is what we have for my second term like in purple color, second bracket, and then now we go for the third one. Okay, so for the third one, since you are having 6, okay, and then 2 plus 3x power negative 2, again, the very first step is you have to ensure this value is actually a 1 before you can apply the binomial theorem to expand the bracket okay so again i'm going to have the six you just copy it pull out the two it will become two power negative one and then after you pull out the two right oh sorry it shouldn't be negative one it should be a negative two because you're having power negative two one right okay then after that pull out the two you have one only then plus three over two x the whole thing power negative two 
Okay, so 6 divided by 2 squared, it will become 6 over 4, lah, which is 3 over 2 here. Okay, then you try to expand what we have here in this bracket. Okay, so first term is a 1, second term is an x. The third term will be n, n minus 1, divided by 2 factorial, and 3 over 2, x, then square. Okay, alright, then of course, uh, by um, using the help of the calculator, then if you try to extend everything here, then you will get 3 over 2, minus 9 over 2x and then plus 81 over 8 then x squared okay so after you expand the three terms separately then you can combine all of them together all right so to combine all of them together we can actually write it like this so originally you're having 1 minus x power negative 1 Okay, then if you have a look for your original answer, this one is minus, right? So you put negative, okay? Or maybe I should use back the different color here. Okay, so you can actually having, you are having 1 minus x power negative 1. Okay, then minus, so you just copy the minus, the bracket is 2 plus 3x power negative 1. And after that, it is a plus, so plus 6 bracket 2 plus 3x power negative 2. So now it will become very easy because you just com uh, put in all the answer that you get just now. So the red color term will be 1 plus x plus x square. Purple color will be minus, then you copy the answer which is half, okay, then minus 3 over 4x plus 9 over 8x square. And then plus for the green color term will be uh, okay, green color term will be 3 over 2 minus 9 over 2x plus 81 over 8x squared. Okay, so if you try to rephrase everything carefully, okay, and then by using the help of calculator and combine all the terms, that, okay, then you should have the final answer which is 2 minus 11 over 4 x then plus 10 x squared okay so this question is a bit long but generally um, you need to be very very careful when you want to expand all the brackets here by using the binomial expansion formula okay so we come to question number 10 all right, so they give you a figure like this, and then um, they tell that the diagram show the curve. Uh, all right, and then the equation is something like this. Okay, so fine, and the minimum point is at M. So they label the M for you as well. Okay, so for the first part, they want you to calculate and find the exact coordinates of M. All right, so when they want you to find the exact coordinates, and it is actually the minimum point. So the technique that we should use here is uh, differentiation. All right. Okay, so I'm having y equals to 2 minus x and then e power negative half x. Ah. Alright, so to do the differentiation, this is actually for this one, you can see that they are two, they are product of two functions. So you, you can use product rules. Ah. Alright, so when I want to find the differentiation, the dy dx, okay, so maybe you can do the differentiation for the first bracket, differentiate 2, you get a 0, okay. Differentiate 2, you get a 0, and then differentiate x, you will get a negative 1, right? Uh, differentiate negative x, you get a negative 1, and then copy the second bracket. Okay, then plus, copy the first bracket, differentiate the second bracket. So when you differentiate the e power negative half x, you get back the e power negative half x, and after that, you thinking of the differentiation for the power itself. Lah. So when you differentiate negative half x, now you are having negative half. Okay, then you can try to simplify your uh, expression here. Okay, so maybe to simplify it, I realize that eh, both terms here are having the e power negative half x. So I will take it out. Then I'm having negative 1. Okay, then 
minus half, then 2 minus x. Alright, okay. So, this is the differentiation. Uh, and when you want to find the minimum point, okay, you have to let dy dx equals to 0, then you have to solve for it. Okay, so when you want to solve for it, again, you're having the product of two functions here, so you need to solve it separately. e power negative half x equals to 0, and you realize that this one you cannot solve. Uh. Alright, so you cannot solve, you ignore it. Okay, then you are going to solve this one, All right? So I'm having negative 1 minus half, 2 minus x equals to 0. Okay, and if you try to express everything carefully and simplify it, uh, eventually the answer that you get should be x equals to 4. Okay. All right, so when x equals to 4, and they're asking for the exact coordinate, now, so that means you also need to find out the value for y. So when x equals to 4, what is the value of y that you get? Okay, so y equals to, you substitute 4 into the equation, the original equation. So you're having 2 minus 4 multiplied with e power negative 2. And eventually, your y is actually negative 2, e power negative 2. And therefore, the coordinate of m will be 4 and negative 2 over e power 2. Okay, so they are asking for the exact value. Right? So you can see that the word exact value means what? means that you have to keep your answer okay, in the exact form. Alright, so this is how we actually get the minimum point, the coordinate for the minimum point, okay, for a function. Alright, so you need to involve the differentiation, you let it go to 0 and you try to solve it. Uh. Then you can get a coordinate for x, substitute into the original equation and you can get a coordinate of y. Okay, so this is what we have for um, part A. Alright, then now, if we go for part number B. Okay, so for part number B, for this question, they are asking you to find the area of the shaded region bounded by the curve and the axis. So give your answer in terms of E. Okay, so now if you have a look for the details here, then you can see that they actually want you to find this shaded area, right? So to find the area under the graph, what you need to do is that you need to um, integrate the function. All right, so to get the area, you need to integrate the function from 0 because here you can see that this is from 0 until which point. So this point, what is the coordinate for this point here? Okay, so if you have a look for your original equation, all right, so you're having y equals to 2 minus x and then e power half, negative half x. And you want to find the x coordinate, you let y equals to 0, the x intercept, so you let y equals to 0 and you're having 2 minus x e power negative half x. So again, you want to solve two function here. And of course, this one, we can't get any solution, so you ignore it. Okay, then for this part, you are having x equals to 2. So you know that this x coordinate, the x intercept here, okay, will be x equals to 2. So that means you want to integrate from 0 until 2. Okay, then you want to do the integration for this function itself to get the area under the graph. All right, so this is how we, we build the equation, we build the expression to find out the area. Okay, then now, again, because you can see very clearly that it consists of two different types of function, the product of function. Okay, then um, according to what we learned before, right, so the 2 minus x belongs to algebra. Okay, then the e power something, right, belongs to exponential function. All right, so the higher level, we are following the rules, L, I, A, T, E, right? So that means the function more in front, that means you are putting it as u. And then the function going towards to the right-hand side, it will be dv over dx. Okay, so from here, you can see that a, the function a will be the u. Therefore, before you want to apply the integration here, you need to let u equals to 
2 minus x. And after that, the dv is equals to negative e power negative half x dx. And then you want to do the integration. So when you want to apply this technique, actually it is the integration by part technique. Right? Okay. So this is the integration by part technique. So once you identify the u and also the um, dv dx already, then you can start to do the differentiation for the u part here. Okay, so you want to find du dx. Okay, so the du dx will be negative 1. Okay, integrate a constant 1 dv, you get a v. Okay, then integrate e power negative half x, you have e negative half x divided by negative half. So if I try to ref uh, re rephrase it now, then I'm having negative 2 e power negative half x. Okay, all right, so there's one function you do the differentiation, another function you do the integration. And after that, you want to substitute all this into the integration by part formula. Okay, so what's the integration by part formula here? Okay, so um, from this step, when you want to apply integration by part, the formula will be uv minus integration of v du. Okay, the original one will be u dv equals to uv minus v du. Actually, this uh, is the integration by part formula, right? Okay, so what is u and what is v? So the u here is 2 minus x, so you put in 2 minus x. What is the v? So the v will be this one, and you are having, um, okay, wait a moment. Ah. So I'm having 2 minus x multiply with negative 2 e power negative half x and then for this equation this expression itself you need to substitute the limit 2 and 0 all right okay and then after that you need to minus minus the integration of v du so again the limit will be the same what is your v here so your v here is negative 2 okay so negative 2 <laughs> E negative half x dx. Uh, okay, so this is my v. Lah. And then what's the du? So again, to get the du, you can come back to the this part here. Du dx equals to negative 1, and therefore du equals to negative dx. So that means when I substitute the du, I have to put in negative dx. Okay, so I substitute everything into the integration by part formula. Then I will try to substitute the limit 0 and 2 into the first term. Okay, so when I substitute 2 into the equation, this whole expression will become 0. Okay, then minus when I substitute 0 into this whole expression here. Okay, then you will get um, 2 multiply with negative 2. Therefore, you get negative 4. Substitute 0 into the x here, okay, and you are getting the 1. So it should be 0 minus negative 4 for the first term. Okay, all right, then after that, um, for this term, you will, uh, for this part, you can see that I'm having a negative 2 and negative here become positive 2, and I will want to take it out. Okay, so it becomes negative 2 still, okay, then 0, 2, and I want to integrate e negative half x. All right, so rephrase everything. I'm having 4 minus 2. Then I try to integrate this expression. I'm having e negative half x divided by negative half. And then again, I'm having the limit from 2 to 0. All right, okay. So I will want to simplify this um, constant first uh, inside the integration answer. Okay, so I will have plus 4, okay, e negative half x, then I want to put in the limit 2 and 0. Okay, so first value, you substitute the limit 2. So when you substitute the limit 2, you're having e negative 1 and minus, now you don't want to substitute the 0 into here, e power 0, it becomes a 1. All right, okay, then 
from this part, you try to simplify everything. Okay, so eventually the answer for the shaded area will be 4 over e power 1, or you can write as 4 e power negative 1. All right, so this will be the answer. And the answer requests you to keep your answer in terms of e. Lah. All right, so this will be your answer for the area. Okay, so here we come to the last question, question number 11. All right, so um, for this question, they give you um, the vector equation for two lines as shown here, okay, and where a, a is a constant. So given that the two lines intersect, all right, so when you say the two lines intersect, uh, that means um, when you try to solve these two equations, okay, for all the three components, x, y, and z, all the values should be the same and tally for lambda and also the mu. Okay, all right, so they want you to find the value of a and also the position vector of the point of intersection. Okay, so for the first line, the vector equation, uh, if you rephrase it in a vector equation form, then I'm having, this is, I, I miss 1, right? Then plus this one, which is plus A lambda. Okay, then J is 2 plus 2 lambda. And also this one, K minus lambda. So 1 plus, oh sorry, 1 minus lambda. Okay, so when the first line intersect with the second line, okay, we will let it equals to and then for the second line here, 2 plus 2 mu. Okay, and then 1 minus mu. And negative 1 plus mu. Okay, so this is something like you are trying to solve the um, simultaneous equation. Okay, but it is in the vector equation form, uh, the, the vector, the, the column vector form. All right. Okay, so once you write it out already, there are three components here, x, y, and z. Alright, so um, to find out the a, of course, you need to solve the value for lambda and also the mu first. Okay, so maybe for me, I will label this as a, equation a, equation b, and equation c. Okay, so for equation b, I'm having 2 plus 2 lambda which is equals to 1 minus mu. And therefore, the mu is actually equals to 1 minus 2 minus 2 lambda. And then mu is equals to negative 1 minus 2 lambda. Okay, so I rephrase my equation number B. Lah. All right, then for the C, I'm having 1 minus lambda equals to negative 1 plus mu. So this is C. And I am going to substitute the B into the C and solve the simultaneous equation. Alright, so I'm having 1 minus lambda equals to negative 1 plus mu. Okay. Then, um, what do we have here? Alright, so if I try to simplify everything, I will get the lambda, which is equals to negative 3. If I didn't do any careless mistake here. Okay, lambda equals to negative 3. And then, of course, you can substitute the negative 3 into either B or C to get the mu. Alright, so once you get lambda equals to negative 3, substitute it into the B here. Okay, substitute into the B equation and you can get the mu. And for the mu answer, you should get the value 5. Alright, okay, so once you solve and get the lambda and mu ready, then of course you can substitute both of them into the equation A. Alright, so for A, I'm having 1 plus A lambda equals to 2 plus 2 mu. Since they say that um, this is intersect, okay, these two lines intersect, uh, so that means for all the three components here, the lambda and mu should have the same value. Alright, so I substitute lambda equals to negative 3, so I'm having negative 3A equals to 2 plus 2, 5. Okay, then from here, if you try to continue and solve it, then the value of A that you get should be negative 11 over 3. All right, so the value of A is negative 11 over 3, which is actually the uh, 
a constant value, lah, okay? So negative 11 over 3. Then um, besides the value of A, they also want you to calculate the position vector of the point of intersection, right? Okay, so position vector of point of intersection. Okay, how, how to find out the position vector for the point of intersection? So generally, you just need to substitute the value of lambda and mu into one of the equation, uh, one of the vector, the vector equation. All right, so maybe for me, I will substitute the mu into this equation. Okay, so the position vector for the point of intersection. Okay, so it is equals to what? It is equals to 2 plus 2 mu. So 2 plus 2 mu, then we substitute the 5 into the uh, component x here. Okay, and therefore you are having um, 12. So I'm having 12i. Okay, then again, substitute the mu into the second, the component y, and you are having negative 4j. All right, and also the last one, the component z, you will get plus 4k. So this is actually the position vector for the point of intersection. Okay, so 12, negative 4 plus 4. Okay, so this is how we do the part 1. All right, part A. Okay, then now maybe we can continue with part number B. Okay, so for this part number B, they are asking, given instead that the acute angle between the direction of the two lines is cos inverse 1 over 6. Okay, so they already tell you that the angle between these two lines is cos inverse 1 over 6, and they actually want you to find the two possible values of A. Okay, so now, this is actually the theta, which means it is the angle between the two lines. Alright, so to find out the angle between the two lines, you need the direction of the line. So what is the direction of the line? means that this one. Okay, so these are the direction of the line for both lines here. Okay, all right, so maybe for this one, I'll label it as P1, and this one, I will label it as P2. Okay, all right, so continue from here. All right, so let's say my P1. If you look at the uh, equation given, right, so the P1 should be A, 2, and negative 1. And then for P2, what will it be? It will be actually 2, negative 1, and also the 1. Okay, so to find out the angle between the direction, uh, okay, so the formula you learned before, uh, so it is something like a dot b. So this is my a, let's say, the first direction multiplied with the second direction, a dot b, and it is equals to uh, the modulus of a, Okay, so the modulus of a will be square root a square plus 2 square plus negative 1 square. And then for the b part will be 2 square plus negative 1 square plus 1 square. The modulus of a multiply with the modulus of b and then cos theta. Okay, so since you already know that the theta given here will be this one, so you can substitute cos cos inverse 1 over 6. Okay, right. Then after that, you try to simplify everything here. Okay, so a multiplied with 2, you get 2a minus 2 and then minus 1. And it is equals to, you try to simplify everything here as well. Then what do you get here will be um, square root. Okay, so a square plus 5. Multiply with square root 6, multiply with 1 over 6. Okay, so if you try to press calculator, now cos and cos inverse, it is something like uh, f composite with f inverse function. So you get back the original value x. All right, so if you don't understand that, you can just press the calculator. Right, so from here, you can get 1 over 6. And then, um, because to me, right, this square root is very troublesome. So what I want to do now is I will bring all the value to one side first. Then I'm having 6 multiplied with 2a minus 3. And then for the right-hand side, I'm having 6 and then a squared plus 5. I combine the third form together. 
and now I want to bring the surfram over become square. Therefore, I'm having 36. 6 square is 36, right? And then this bracket itself, you also square it. So when you square this whole bracket, you are having 4a square. Then you're having negative 12a plus 9. And it is equal to 6a square plus 30. Or maybe if you don't want to multiply it in, you can just keep the 6 outside. So that later you can simplify it. Okay. Alright, so now. The 6 and the 36 here, you can simplify it, right? Okay, so if you try, okay, so if you try to rephrase and simplify everything, uh, eventually you should get a quadratic equation. Okay, so which is 23a squared minus 72a and then plus 49 and it is equals to 0. Okay, then of course uh, you can use any method to solve for this quadratic equation. Okay, so you can solve it. You can either factorize it or you can solve it by using the quadratic formula. Eventually, the value for A that you get should be two values here, which is 49 over 23. Another value will be A equals to 1. Okay, so this is what you have for the value of 